Welcome back to the Business Tech FinTech Conference 2022. Well, it's time now to talk about innovation and FinTech, and really the two go hand in hand, like the FinTech portmanteau. It really is the heart of what FinTech is all about. It's about innovation. And the future of banking is inextricably linked to innovation, according to the Bank of International Settlements. And uh, I was watching an interview with Jamie Dimon, the head of JP Morgan, and he said it's the banks that don't innovate, that don't embrace FinTechs and partnerships uh, that are likely going to be the ones that fall by the wayside. Now, uh, some some may say that uh, this is not really in the heart of the transactional nature of business. We're here to compete. But I do see a new age of collaboration between the fintechs and banks. And it's really being spearheaded by that innovation very often that the fintechs can bring because they're small, they're nimble. And it's something our next speaker knows all too well, this heart of innovation. Michael Shapiro, Managing Director at Synthesis, a software development company that uses innovative technology to provide businesses with a competitive edge today. And uh, Michael, I was looking at some of your customers, Vitality, Pick and Pay, you know, really some of the big blue chip clients here in South Africa. So great to have you join us at this event. Firstly, what's the difference between sustained versus disruptive innovation? Because th there is quite a big difference. I think it's important to understand this. Do we really care which one we are carrying out? Hi, Michael. Yes, thanks so much for having me and welcome to the to the audience. Fantastic to be part of this event. And I think you your introduction spoke about it. In order to remain relevant today, financial institutions and banks have to focus on innovation. And you just touched on such an interesting point, understanding what type of innovation the organization is completing. So the difference between sustained innovation and disruptive innovation is really key to understanding how to harness and leverage this fintech environment that we're moving into. Sustained innovation is pretty much an improvement on an existing process. So it's taking something that was done and making it more efficient, making it cost less, and it's really an incremental change. It's offering mm. the same product to that same market. And a lot of our corporations have excellent ability to create sustained innovation. And I think South African banks, South African financial service organizations have been really strong at sustained innovation. And we've been doing it for years. It's a great facet of the South African corporate culture. But I think really where organizations need to transport themselves is to understand disruptive innovation. Disruptive innovation is something like a step change. So it's the use of the technology to probably access a whole new market or to offer a completely new product that maybe didn't exist before the disruptive innovation came about. And there are many fantastic examples of it. If you think of Netflix, their digital distribution of content really took an organization like Blockbuster that was selling DVDs or, or videos to a consumer yeah. from, I think it was, you know, thousands of branches all the way down to one branch in their organization. And Netflix is a great example of disruptive innovation. The, the real key for disruptive innovation is not actually the disruptive technology itself, but it's the use of that disruptive technology. And certainly organizations like Amazon and Netflix use the internet as the business model to facilitate that, that innovation. And we're seeing in amazing advancements in technology and our FinTech organizations need to be alive to utilizing it for disruptive innovative purposes. So AI and machine learning, the technology in and of itself is very disruptive, but how is it used to really open up products and services to a market or create new products and services to that existing market that really is going to be a major differentiator for some of our organizations. And I suppose the, the debate is, should we focus on disruptive innovation over sustained innovation? And I think there's probably a lever inside of an organization that they will pull. You know, obviously, they have to focus on their continued sustained innovation, but at the same time, be really alive to maybe their competitors and you mentioned it in the introduction, some of the fintech players that are very much more nimble, agile, alive to utilizing these technologies. How will they disruptively innovate their business model, their customer base, uh, potentially 
you know, making them the next blockbuster uh, of yeah. the world yeah. today. So yeah. it's an interesting, okay. interesting times. It really is. It reminds me also of the Napster moment. You know, I, I don't know if you had one of those CD Walkmans and uh, it, no one used to really be able to share. Oh, you could make a mixtape maybe by uh, recording things off the radio. But th when Napster came in and we digitized musical content, that was a real disruptive moment. Uh, I think uh, we then saw the Beatles catalog being put onto Napster and that really signaled it's come of coming of age. That was the step change. And I think there's a huge opportunity to secure a significant march on your competition and, and get a whole lot of market share and value if you understand where those disruptive opportunities are. So I, I agree with you. It, it almost has to be a, a dual track, sustained innovation, but with an eye on, on that disruptive innovation as well. If you were to look in, into some examples of real and successful disruptive innovation, you mentioned Netflix and the blockbuster moment, but within a South African context, are there any that readily spring to mind? Yeah, so, so it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned it again in your intro up front. I think Discovery's Vitality platform is quite a disruptive, innovative way to approach healthcare or to approach insurance. Previously, insurers were pricing insurance based on an actuarial model of risk. They weren't mm -hmm. looking at lifestyle. They weren't looking at health data and other data points. And they weren't looking at a reward mechanism. So I really believe that the vitality model that Discovery have innovated with their health insurance product in South Africa and now through their offering called the Vitality Group are bolting that on to global insurers around, um, around the world to help them, as, as I mentioned, price their insurance product a lot better and then reward and incentivize the um, base for, for the correct sort of behaviors, the early warning and early detection, the um, ability to, to be healthy and then to measure that. You know, they, they utilize the technology. All of us are walking around with Fitbits, Garmin watches, all of our data is being tracked. And they saw the opportunity to upload that data, to analyze it and to provide their customers with this shared value model. So I do believe that that's a, that's a disruptive innovation that they introduced to the insurance market. And I, and I think a lot of fintechs are probably looking at that research and saying, how do we utilize the technology that's available to create these products that are more cheaper, uh, more accessible, mm -hmm. that uh, incentivize and um, provide benefit back to the customer? So yeah, I, I love that one. We work with the organization. Um, they're, they're a very innovative group and, and, and they, they track that innovation. They incentivize their, their teams to, to bring that innovation to the fore. They work really hard at continuously improving what they do. And um, they utilize the technologies, not for the technology's sake. They're offering that vitality model on the, on the cloud. So they can go to China and uh, they can go to Japan, uh, Sumitomo Life Insurance, Ping Yang, their joint venture, and offer this platform because they, they know the cloud's global capability that can yeah. deliver the same service that they have pioneered in South Africa to these German, Canadian, American insurers. It's, uh, it's, 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 truly, a, it's truly a great uh, innovation that um, I think South Africa should be proud of. Yeah, globally scalable, and I think taught at Harvard as a case study on shared value. Uh, you've got the discovery vitality model, so certainly a feather in uh, Adrian Gore and the rest of the team's cap there. Now, it's all about creating the culture inside the organization that allows that kind of innovation to thrive, isn't it? And I, I guess it's one of those intangible things sometimes when you think about, well, how do I approach this idea of fostering and seeding a culture in the business where every single employee feels that they can innovate without being shot down, shot down, especially disruptive innovation, you know, because I think the sustained innovation, that's encouraged. But when you say, well, let's do something completely different, very often I still feel corporate South Africa is fairly conservative and tends to rather just stay in its sustained innovation lane. How do you create that culture? Uh, that's, that, that's, that's probably an accurate reflection that corporate South Africa isn't alive to this. And I think a, a great way of doing it is, is creating teams, multidisciplinary teams across the organization, not just general managers, 
that mm -hmm. are putting forward innovative ideas. And especially when you take that cross-function of different people and ask them to apply their minds to, to solving a problem, you'll obtain some of these really interesting outputs that are surprising. A great way of doing it is, is a hackathon. We, yeah. we run them twice a year where we create these teams across different uh, groups within, within the company. We also provide the technology base to do that. And then I suppose the, the classic example of not uh, providing or not allowing people to have a fear of failure or, mm -hmm. or the fear of saying the wrong thing. I think in South Africa, we, we fall foul of that symptom. Everyone should stay in their lane. And that's, that's a major problem because we're not going to get disruption. We're not going to get the idea that really comes out of left field if we're forcing people to stay in the lane or we're, we're encouraging people to, to do just what is within their ambit of responsibility. So I think it's, it's important that those frameworks are created. I think some of these projects need to be funded. So after a hackathon or after there's an, an, an amazing idea, and we've seen, you know, in the press, Vodacom's innovative idea that landed up developing the Please Call Me revolutionized their business. <laughs> did result in some <laughs> did result in, in some arguments over who owned it at the end. But I think that's a great example of, of a disruptive innovation that mm -hmm. um, helped their business sig significantly. And it came from an employee. It came from yeah. someone who understood the market and, and gave that input. So I think utilizing communication channels. Yes, there's some challenges today. We have a lot of people working from home, a lot of people working remotely. How do we use these new channels to foster the communication across different functions? The old water cooler talk has kind of diminished because we don't have as many people in the office. How do we create new touch points, new synapses firing uh -huh. with, uh, with, with, with different areas of the business. So some new interesting challenges. We're going to be running a hackathon where it is going to be partially remote and partially at, at our two presences in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Uh, and the tech really supports it. So uh -huh. those, are, yeah. those are some of the ways that we, we're seeing organizations do this. I've often had some of my best innovative ideas in a chance meeting, someone just pop their head into the office or in a kitchen somewhere making a coffee and discussing a problem or a challenge. And I think, um, you know, where the tech is a great enabler is it allows us to connect um, regardless of, you know, our time constraints, uh, but it also potentially creates a bit of distance in being able to do that. So it's about how to balance that, I guess, inside an organization that really managers need to be very mindful of. Now, if you if you to look at what measures indicate if, a, if an enterprise is succeeding with innovation, do you look at output? Do you say, well, these are the outputs for the year and therefore you must be succeeding? Are, are there measures that you use? And is there kind of an organizational structure or maybe a financial incentive model that promotes this type of innovation? Do you link it to KPIs? How do you approach this? Yeah, so, 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 so we're busy grappling with, with those. And, and I think outputs may be the wrong measure because it's, that's, a, that's a lagging input. So we, we look at some of the leading inputs. So we want our teams to create four spike ideas a year. So these are, you know, in the, in the realm of disruptive innovation, we just want them to create four of them per year. So one a quarter. So the team is incentivized to put forward, present, create a budget, um, start the process for a dis right. disruptive, innovative idea. Um, whether or not they progress to the next stage is part of a, a team that assesses the viability and the budget and potential output. And then, um, and then takes it to the next level. But the, the incentive is really around the creation of the ideas, not necessarily around the output because of those four in our 10 business units, 40 ideas, we may take three of them forward or four of them mm -hmm. forward to the next stage. But the, the incentive is really to create the, the context and the framework, uh, some of the thinking. So provide the individuals also with the tools that, that they would need to, to look at these ideas and then certainly to give them support and budget. And I think a great, a great one is also showcasing some of the, yeah. the successes.
So where there is a success, to, to showcase and call it out. I, I think that's enough of a, an incentive. Um, and I suppose you know, different approaches can be t- uh, taken in different organizations. I know some like to gamify this thing and if you have got a leaderboard and bring out that inherent competitive spirit in us. It might not work in some organizations and that might actually seek, serve to retard and, and push people back into their shells. So I think you've really got to understand your, your, your team. But a big part of this, I mean, if you're only taking a handful of ideas, you, you're producing 40 odd ideas, you're only taking three forward, means you've got to kill off a lot of ideas. And that, that, that's not an easy conversation to have. How do you do that? How, do you, how does an organization kill off an idea if they're not successful? while you know still retaining some of that residual or inherent benefit and not demotivating the team yeah it's it's, it's really true because the, the last thing we want or any organization wants is the unintended consequence of that that demotivation so i think it's it's really important that post the idea being killed off and yes you have to be quite mercenary around us have to be quite quite real uh, in terms of, of saying which can succeed and and which can't important part is to say post the idea being kill, killed off let the team present what learnings they obtained because that can mm-hmm. spark a whole lot of other innovation that can come about in, in a really um, unintended way um, the classic example of, of the 3m post-it note you know a failed bonding glue it has revolutionized the entire industry. And, you know, we, in our agile software development process, we still use post-it notes. It's now moved to an online Miro board, um, but the concept is, is still living and is, is, is very much alive. So I think the, the embracing some of the learnings that come out and allowing that yeah. team to, to present that to the broader company to say, well, you know, the idea didn't go forward, but what we learned is that the use of this technology or the use of this idea being put into practice has really been beneficial in other ways, been beneficial. And that maybe lends itself back to the sustained innovation that the organization then brings into its business processes. And in that way, I think employees understand that the process is in many ways part of the innovation it's not just the output it's the learnings that you can get in that process as well and that I think it's a great way of approaching it it's very sustainable it's a great story about the um the 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 founder of Prestic and how that was certainly not intended to be the sticky all-purpose uh, bonding agent as well that we have today. It was certainly not in, set out to be that. But again, one of those unintended consequences that comes out of an organization that allows itself to innovate and to think disruptively. Michael Shapiro, thank you very much. Managing Director at Synthesis here at the Business Tech FinTech Conference 2022, adding great value and getting us uh, to get out of our lanes and start thinking disruptively. Stay tuned. We've got some great speakers lined up after this. Cheers, Michael.